Hello, everybody. This is uh, Move Easy Yoga Online with Via. It is October 3rd. Moving quickly through October. Let's start in the usual fashion, just lying on your back. Noticing your breath. Coming into the room. I'm going to mute myself and just call Caitlin because I'm worried because I haven't heard from her. And you guys can stay here in this position. Don't worry. Let's go into a Vegas nerve reset. Just bring your hands behind your back, your occipital ridge, base of your skull. Oh. And without moving anything but your eyeballs, move your eyeballs to the right. And wait for a sigh, gulp, yawn. And come back to center. Shift your eyeballs to the left. Wait for a sw sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. And then come back to center and repeat vagus nerve reset two times without cues. We're in Vegas nerve reset, Caitlin. finish up. Keep your hands where they are, head ramping, just pressing the back of your skull, the occipital ridge, 
the base of the skull into your hands, pressing, holding for a couple breaths, and then releasing. And two more times. And release. Bring your hands down and put your one hand on your belly at your navel and one hand on your chest. We're going to do diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, feel the, you're going to feel the breath expand in the rib cage and the be at the belly, but if, if you start to um, notice much activity at the chest, you're, you're, you need to refocus the breath lower to the rib cage. So just go ahead and inhale, and you can first start to feel the belly rise, and then exhale, feel it fall. Just take a couple of breaths, noticing uh, there is a rib cage expansion, but we're noticing the belly right now. And now start to notice the rib cage expansion in all directions. So the belly is still rising and falling, but now notice, just note, put your attention on the rib cage. And when you exhale, see if you can notice your transverse abdominal muscles at the very bottom of, near the pubic bone. So exhale. Actually, when you inhale and when you exhale, see if you can notice as you breathe that you are also doing core work. That's the bottom line. So as you inhale, feel the, the lowest abdominal muscles tightening naturally, and then exhaling, and then inhaling. And a couple more times. And then we're going to do um, hyperpressives. Let's do the bridge hyperpressive. You could have a brick nearby if you need it. Um, you're going to take three, you're going to start with your heels on the ground and your toes toward the ceiling. And then we're going to count to three. I'll help. I'll count to three. And then after three, holding the breath out for 12 counts. Uh, when you start to hold the breath out on, on, on the one count, the first count, just lift your hips up. You can demonstrate this, Kathy. Lift your hips up and then your arms go overhead. So this is on the, no, the holding out breath, the no breath. Come on back, Kathy, and I'll start to count. 
um, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, Last one, inhale. And exhale all the way out. Hold your breath out, no breath. Lift your hips, bring your arms overhead, straight arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Inhale, hips come down, and the uh, exhale, the arms come down. We'll do it again. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, last exhale. Hold your breath out, no breath, lift your hips, arms overhead, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Inhale and return. Exhale, everything returns. Extend your legs. I'm going to show you a, an easy core, some easy core work that you can do in bed. Um, put a sponge ball between your thighs, Kathy and everybody, <laughs> extend your legs. Now, what I want you to do is um, put your hands behind your head and lift your head. So your head is resting in your, uh, your hands. Um, and then what you're gonna do, actually maybe you should rest, rest your head in one of your hands. The other hand, touch the base of the uh, sternum at the bottom of the breastbone. So it's just underneath your um, um, breasts there. Now you're going to lift from there. So lift, your head is lifted up already. Your head is off the floor. Now lift from, so that, but the head is resting back. So it's, you're not using your head. And then lift. And this is instead of a crunch. Kathy and I were talking about something similar to this the other day. So, um, lift, but you're lifting, the lift is happening at the, um, at the base of the bottom of the sternum. Squeeze your ball, lift, and your head is resting, so it's not doing any work. The, the, the work is at the sternum, at the base of the sternum. Lift, lift the, the chest forward. So, is that correct? I think so. It looks correct to me. So your head might be up a little higher. But you can feel, that's where you should feel it. It's right at the, um, the, the base. It's, it's in the abdominals at the base of the sternum. And squeeze your ball. That's just a bonus. And do a couple more of those. So this is a... These are my suggestion instead of crunches. It's, it, this is a very intense movement. As, as you get familiar with it, you'll, you'll lift a little far higher. Your chest will go up. The trick is not to use your head, which is why you have a hand, the hand under your head. What you, you're using is your abdominals. And you can stop that and grab a strap. <laughs> Let your, release your ball, your sponge ball. Grab a strap, we're gonna do leg stretch one and two. 
We're going to stay on the right side first and then the left. I'm going to time this. This is a bone building pose at the hip, um, at the femur and the hip. So your, head, your strap is on your right leg, which is up towards the ceiling. Keep your pelvis on the floor and just stay here and breathe. One, each hand is holding on to one side of the strap. Breathing and allowing, imagining the osteocytes doing their job now. There are other benefits to this pose, but I'm timing it for bone building purposes. Go ahead and do leg stretch number two. So you're gonna go out to the side, the right leg out to the right. Keep your hips on the floor. Can you, can you take your left hip a little farther to, back to the floor, Kathy? It's, your leg is gonna go up, I don't care. <laughs> Not a problem. If, 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 you, if you use your left hip to bring your right foot closer to the floor, that's not doing the work you're supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be doing. Come on back. Switch sides. Left leg. Leg stretch one. And timing. Keep your hips on the floor. Keep your pelvis in neutral. So you're not tilting your pelvis. You can bring your toes towards your nose. Breathing. And go ahead and move into leg stretch two. Drop your leg, left leg out to the left. Keep your right hip on the floor. We're gonna do it one more time. Come back to the right side. Leg stretch one and then two, so. So for leg stretch one, you use both hands. Uh, one hand, the right hand is holding onto the right side of the strap. The left hand is holding to the left. For leg stretch, stretch two, you put both hand, both straps in one hand. Leg stretch two on the right, both straps in the right hand. Breathing, waiting, imagining the osteocytes building new bone at the femur and the hip socket. Keep your left, the left side of your pelvis down on the floor. You may, your leg may not be down as far as Kathy's. Switch sides, leg stretch number one on the left.
Leg stretch two. Both straps in the left hand, drop your leg to the left. Keep your right pelvis, your right hip on the floor. Come on back, bring yourself up to standing. So see how Kathy comes into a side-lying position with her knees bent and then comes up to standing. The idea is not to round your back while you're coming up. One of the ideas. We're going to work on foundational short foot. This is a little different than when we've been doing. Whoops. Uh, um, and, a, and Kathy, I'm not sure whether we can use that or not because I'm going to ask you to have a split stance. So the right leg is forward and the back leg is back. You know, if, 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 maybe if it's long enough. So Oh, one is forward and the other one is straight back. So take your right, left foot straight back. No, no, put, bring, to, your toes are pointed toward both. Yes, it's like that, right? Oh, like that, okay, that's probably long enough, okay. This is a, called split, splits, splits. This is one version of the splits, actually. You're gonna, okay. you're gonna soften your knees and then find your tripod, your foot tripod. Can you bring your, yes, straighten your foot a little bit there. Both, both feet, straighten both feet if you can. You don't have to have your legs as far apart as that, Kathy. So bring them closer together if you need to. Let's see, they're not one, and they're not one behind the other. So, so your left, your behind foot can be away from, okay, this is, so this becomes a balancing, doesn't it? Soften your knees, find on your right foot, the front foot, find your foot tripod. So notice the big toe, just under the big toe, just under the little toe and the heel. So the tripod, notice that. And now lift and spread your toes. And then push your toe, toenails down or your pads of your foot down. See if you can notice an increase in the medial arch. Relax and repeat on the other side. So the left foot forward. Left foot forward. I can see that your carpet is spongy. Left foot forward. Yeah. yeah. But you can, use... can you, what is, what's, what is off the carpet? Is that another carpet? Yes. Is that less spongy? Well, yeah, no floor in here. Okay. Left foot forward and find your tripod first. So that, that's the three points be, below the big toe, below the little toe, and at the heel, the front of the heel. Find the tripod, lift and spread your toes, push your toenails down, Come down, push your toenails down in the floor. Notice an increase in the medial arch. And stay and switch sides. We're gonna add, add something. We're gonna add the core. So there's a, a connection between the feet and the core. And I'm going to try to help you find that with, the, with an addition of engagement of the core. We're going to actually engage the core at the same place that um, I was actually asking you to engage the core in breathing and even the same place that, that, that uh, we did when you were lying on your back and doing core work. 
So right foot forward, soft knees, find the tripod, lift and spread your toes. Now engage your core as far down towards the pubic bone, so T, the transverse abdominal muscle, the lowest core muscle, engage your core. Now push your toes down. So don't, don't push your toes down before you engage your core. Push the toenails down. And notice the core to foot connection. Hold and then relax. So I'm not sure, Kathy with her carpet, whether she can feel the core connection, but maybe she can. And if, if the idea would be to have hardwood floor. Go ahead and switch sides, Kathy, and everybody. Left foot forward, split stance, knees are soft. Find your tripod. On this, you're working on the front foot now. Find the tripod. You may be a little, you, your stance may be a little bit wide, Kathy, I'm not sure. I can't tell for sure. Okay, now you're going to find the tripod. Lift and spread your toes. Now engage your core and then push the toenails down and see if you can notice the core. And relax and repeat. So repeat it on the left. So tripod, spread your toes, engage your core. Now push the toenails down or the toe pads down. Hold and relax. Switch to the other side. Soft knees, find your foot tripod, big toe, little toe, heel. Lift and spread your toes, engage your core. Now push the toenails down or the toe, toe pads down and hold and see if you can find the connection between your feet and your core. So, Come to a floor seated position. Um, if any of you could find the core, uh, let me know. This will take some practice, but we're gonna try to make that foot to core connection because it's, it's actually an advanced version of, of short foot, basically. And you guys are advanced short foot footers. We're gonna do a cervical side bend. Uh, with a strap for the first to add the first rib reset. So put a strap over. Where's my strap? Put a strap over your right shoulder. We're going to do the strap until we add res Kihara resistance to the, to the to the to the work. So you're going to hold on. I guess. Tarumi is the only one who hasn't done this before. This is a first rib reset. So holding on to the back of the strap with your right hand and the front of the strap with your left hand, tugging on the strap so that you are actually um, creating tension at the, at the shoulder. And then just drop your right ear to your right shoulder, so keeping the tension in the strap. Breathing, sitting tall. So the only thing that's really side bending is your cervical spine, your neck. And go ahead and drop your chin forward towards the armpit. Keep tension on the strap. Breathe, enjoy, sit tall. And 
Now let go of the strap and bring your right, let's say your, your right ear is, your right ear is toward the, so bring your, your ear up to neutral. Yeah, instead of the tilted, chin tilted forward. So now take your right hand and put it on your right ear. We're gonna add Kihara resistance to this work. So left ear, sorry, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy said like dutifully <laughs> puts it on the right ear as you should, of course. <laughs> now you're gonna press into the hand. So press the ear, left ear into the right hand and just stay here. This is a whole other uh, stretch for the cervical spine and the muscles along the neck. Pressing into the, to the ear. This is a Kihara resistance neck stretch. Just stay here and breathe. And then go ahead and release your hand and drop your chin. So dropping forward a little bit with your chin. And now put your hand back. Sorry, I didn't mean to release it the whole way, but I didn't want you to be pressing, creating resistance while you're moving from one position to the other. So you release that, move to the second position, chin, chin dropped toward armpit, and now press back up into the hand that's on the ear. Stay here and breathe. And then release your hand and bring your head up to center and then all the way up. Switch the strap. Switch the strap and hold on to the strap. <clears throat> Tug on the strap. This, this is stabilizing your first rib. Often, not always, but often, the first rib is out of place uh, and it can create shoulder problems. So here we are just adding this bonus to the neck stretch. Tugging on your strap both ends of your strap, dropping your left ear to the left shoulder. The, le the first rib cage is out often enough to make this a good thing to include in the class. <laughs> it's not rare. Breathing. Now dropping your chin forward, stretching a different location on the neck. Bring your chin up and then bring your entire head up. Release the strap will do the Kihara resistance location, which is a totally different neck stretch. So working on the neck today. This is a this this is not a focused class. This is an all, an all body workout. So first we were working on hips and then core and now neck. Bring your drop your chin. You drop your head to the left again. Bring your Left hand to your right ear. And press into the right hand, the left hand. Press into the left hand. You should be getting a whole different stretch here. Breathe and enjoy.
then release, just release your hand a little bit so you can drop your chin a little bit forward. Put your hand back and press up into it. And breathe, stretch and breathe. These are things you could do at, at your office in, in the chair. I'm thinking of you, Bridget. Go ahead and release your hand and then bring your chin back to normal and then bring your head up. And see if maybe you can rotate left, right. You can see, see what, what, what worked, what, whether that worked for you with some immediate relief from the tension we hold in the neck. Come into a cross-legged position. We're gonna do a um, spine twist with an intercostal slide. So adding a bone, we're gonna do a classic uh, spine twist, yoga spine twist with, cro with cross legs, actually. You could do this with um, on a, in a hero's pose or with, uh, with the bent knees up. But I'm finding that for this class, I think it's best to do cross-legged. Take your right, take your left hand and put it on your right knee. We're gonna rotate to the right first. Bring your right hand behind you, like uh, the fingers become a spider. And then use your hand to help you rotate the thoracic spine to the right. See if you can, see how far you can get. S sit up tall. Once you've arrived, slide the rib cage back and forth, right to left. So this is uh, uh, an effort to release the inter intercostal muscles that are uh, beside the ribs and they often get tight. So spine twist first, then intercostal or rib cage slide. And then come on back, slowly come on back and reverse, uncross your legs and cross them again. Put your right hand on your left leg. Rotate the spine. So bring your hand behind you, your left hand behind you with your fingers in a spider. Helping you rotate. Find your spine twist. Your seated spine twist, four seated spine twist. And then start to slide right to left. Back and forth. When I first started doing the intercostal slide, I'd always feel it in the upper trapezius. Um, that's changing now, actually. So this must be good for me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a, one of those people that, and you may be too, that hold a lot of tension in my, in, along the trapezius. Let's go ahead and repeat this on the other side. So come out of it, unwind, left, Hand on right knee, right hand behind you, like a spider. And then right, left, right, left.
Slowly bring yourself back, unwind, go to the other side. We'll finish up this set on the other side. Right, uh, right hand, left knee, spinal twist. See how far you can twist. And then when you get there, intercostal slide. Shoot. Go ahead and uh, let's see, let's, so come back out of that, come back out of that. And let's do uh, shoulder clams. So sitting in your favorite floor seated position, bring your, interlace your fingers in front of your face. Your elbows are about as high as your chin. And your, the base of your palm, there's a little hole between your interlaced fingers and your palm. So it's the hole is, is between the, so there's a hole, I, you, I can almost, I can see light there. So the fingers are interlaced and the palms are together. There's a hole between there. Imagine you have a balloon between your elbows. Your elbows are wide and you're pushing in the elbows towards each other to deflate the balloon. That's to begin with. And then you let, allow the balloon to in, in, inflate. So this is an isometric movement for the upper traps, actually. Should feel good after the intercostal slide. Slowly, slowly, keep your elbows as high as your chin or higher. You can experiment with them a little higher, but don't bring them below the chin. Back and forth you go. Imagining that it's important to imagine that there is a um, balloon between your elbows that you're you're in you're deflating and then allowing to inflate. And then finish up. Bring your arms down for for flying pizza. Arms down by your side, elbows bent, palms facing each other, and then move just the forearms, move them out as you rotate the wrists. Sit tall, so out you go. That's the pizza, flying pizza part. <laughs> and then bring, bring them back, palms facing each other. Now out, out your forearms go and the palms face the ceiling. Serving a pizza. This is uh, actually for the upper back, for the rotator cuff muscles. And one more time. And then go ahead and come up to standing or back bend at the wall for our back bend and spine twist series at the wall. You're gonna stand with your back to the wall and then bring, stand in a um, good posture position. And try when you when your arm we're gonna I mean, you're gonna bring your arms overhead when your arms are overhead on the wall, I want you to try to keep your hips directly above your ankles so that you're not coming you're not making the back bend with your the bottom part of your body rather the top. So standing, 
and good posture, bringing your arms up, bending your elbows, bringing your arms up over, up and over, palms or fingertips or whatever you can get on the wall. Try to keep your hips directly above your ankles, but the chest opens up. And I'm gonna turn down. This is a bone building pose. Among other things, it's a postural pose too. This is a bone building pose for the spine, for the upper spine, the thoracic spine. Just stay here and breathe. We're timing for 30 seconds so to give the osteocytes a chance to work. Release, come out of this, unravel. We're gonna do a spine twist at the wall, spinal rotation at the wall. Right shoulder to the wall, right foot forward, left foot back, bend your elbows, and then rotate your chest, your thoracic spine towards the wall. Your hips are staying forward. And see if you can experiment with pressing against the wall with your one hand and then the other. What helps you improve your rotation. This is also loading the upper back, the thoracic spine and building new bone here. This is an area that's really hard to get to in terms of bone building. So it's an important pose. Go ahead and switch to the other side, left shoulder to the wall, left foot forward, right foot back, Bend your elbows, rotate your thoracic spine towards the wall, and stay here. And breathe. And enjoy. I love to include a lot of spine twists in a class because uh, there's something we don't get and they actually benefit the entire body and, and um, our norm, more normal positions. So, uh oh, did she drop? Oh, poop. Am I gone? Am I gone? Am I gone? No. Go ahead and let's do the overhead arms again. So, Just finding your best open chest back bend. Come on out. Find your way onto the floor. on your belly. Well, actually, let's start with quadrupeds first. So on all fours, so hands and knees, we're going to do bird dog, which is a core and balancing exercise. So on all fours, the Right leg goes, slides back along the floor and then up, parallel, and the left arm comes up. And then there you stay, there's the bird dog. So keep your shoulders uh, and your hips even or as even as you can. And just stay here and breathe. You, you can feel the balancing part and the core part, I hope. And then go ahead and Slowly come down and switch sides. Slide the left leg along the floor, lift it up into parallel. Right arm, left leg, breathing. 
feeling the core work here. The belly should be helping you stabilize here. Stay as long as you can. And come on down. Find your way onto your belly for back extension, level one and two. Inhale to prepare. So let me, oh, let me say this for people who aren't looking at Kathy. She's lying on her, on her belly uh, with her arms beside her hips, palms up. Take an inhale to prepare and an exhale to lift your chest, your arms to your head. Keep your head in line with your, your thoracic spine and stay here for a little time. And uh, during the time, halfway through, you may want to try to lift your chest just a little higher. And come on down if you need to before I cue it. This, you'll get better at this as you go. Kathy's been doing this for a number of years. <laughs> go ahead and come on down. Inhale to prepare and exhale to come up. Inhale to come into airplane and exhale to, to get there. Stay here. So once again, building bone in the um, thoracic spine, the upper back and the lower back actually here. Just breathing and staying as long as you can. Come down if you, early if you need to. And now inhale to prepare to come down and exhale to return to the floor. Bring your arms out into a T, thoracic, prone thoracic release. Look to the right, bring your right leg up and over the back leg. Keep your arms, armpits, and uh, hands on the floor. You can do anything you want with your hips, actually, legs. Come on back, other side, look left, left leg comes up, goes behind the right leg. Keep your armpits, your shoulders, your hands, your arms, forearms, upper arms, every, all of the arms stay, the airplane stays in place. And come on down and find your way onto your back for the yoga nidra, close of class. Find a warm and comfortable position. Start to notice your breath. Breathing in and out and observing your belly as it rises and falls with the gentle flow of your breath. Now bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, 
wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, left knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes your 61 point guided meditation. Go ahead and become aware of the room that you're in and stretch your legs along the mat. Bring your arms overhead. Try to stretch your arms and legs away from each other and create a little bit more space between the rib cage and the pelvis. Wiggle and stretch and rotate your fingers, wiggle your fingers and rotate your wrists and your ankles. And then hug your right knee to your chest, hug your left knee to your chest, hug both knees to your chest and rock from side to side. And whenever you're ready, roll to one side into a fetal position with your bottom arm as your pillow. Stay here. Put your, the palm of your upper hand on the floor and push yourself up sideways to seated. Find your favorite seated position. Unmute yourself. I'm going to put myself on gallery view so I get to see everybody. But I don't know that I can do that for you. I think you have to do that for yourself. From here, I'm going to find my <laughs> seated position. Bring your hands to your heart. Press, press your palms together strongly, stimulating all of the nerve endings in your palms. And then go ahead and relax that into just a little prayer position. Lift your skull, the occipital ridge, the back of the base of the skull. Lift it up and then roll forward, nod forward, bowing, bowing to each other. Acknowledging the light in each other um, and honoring that. Knowing that we are all one light. And we're gonna close the class in the usual fashion by saying to each other, Namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody.